I really think asynchronous learning is incredibly beneficial. Last spring, we saw a lot of schools um, implemented immediately as a sort of emergency protocol for COVID and then abandon it quickly after because they weren't seeing student compliance as, as much as they'd like to. And I think that that is uh, a normal reaction and totally understandable. But when implemented correctly, I think it is incredibly beneficial. Number one, it increases agency in students. They feel like they have a little bit more say and, and control over their learning. And when I talk to students about what they like about our school, it's that increased agency. They like to be able to co control their schedule during the day. They like to choose what to do in what order. Um, second, it helps teach students the executive functioning skills that they need to be successful. They need to be organized. They need to have good time management skills. And we assist students in learning those um, as they're starting to, to venture into asynchronous learning at our school. And then, of course, students are able to work at their own pace and at their own level during the day. We know as classroom teachers that whenever we assign a task, it never takes all the students the exact same amount of time to complete that task. All students work at very different paces and asynchronous learning allows them to take the time um, or to work as quickly as they'd like. One more note about those executive functioning skills. Um, when you are doing asynchronous learning, it is really important to understand that you need to be teaching these alongside the content. It's not just teaching, you know, whatever the content is for that day. You need to be actively reminding students and teaching students how to work through it. So using timers is really helpful and important. Teaching students how to organize uh, their schedule for the day, whether that's through planners, digital organization tools, or just the, the tools right within the learning management system. And then following up with students as quickly as possible, really important as well. So monitoring work throughout the day, identifying students who maybe haven't started, checking in, um, and involving those parents or learning coaches too, to make sure that they're helping to hold students accountable at home. Accountability is a big thing that we do in the school building as teachers, right? We're standing over students' shoulders encouraging them to work and making sure that they're being productive for the day. So when we don't have that physical presence for accountability, we need to use our digital tools and then also leverage the help of those uh, learning coaches or parents whenever possible. Whenever I'm building asynchronous lessons, I'm almost always doing it in a Google slide deck. The reason is because I think it helps chunk work really nicely for students. Um, there are studies that have been done about cognitive overload and when students see too many instructions or too many images or just too much in one space, it becomes overwhelming and they disengage from that learning. So Google Slides makes it really nice because they can click through each slide and get one piece of information or just a couple of pieces of information on each one allowing it to uh, be more palatable and, and help them sort of work through it, again, at their own pace. I always start with a title slide. My next slide is the learning target. Then an overview of what the lesson will um, entail. Next, I have whatever the direct instruction or the demonstration of the activity is. A lot of times I'm recording these videos myself and I'll show you an example of that. Occasionally I'm um, finding videos as well on YouTube. Either one is good. As you can see here, starting to indicate some of that time management or how long they should be spending and asking comprehension questions on the video to ensure students are actually watching it. In this case, I've also written out the instructions for the students. And then up in the top right hand corner, I've included a link to a timer. So this is indicating to students, this assignment should take you 15 minutes. When they get to this slide, they click in, open up that timer in a new tab, and the timer will automatically start. Then the students can come back to the lesson, start working, and they know if they finish, a lot before that timer goes off, 
they're expected to go back in and try to dig a little bit deeper or do a little bit more on the work. Or if the timer goes off before they're finished, or if they still have a lot to do, that's an indication that they need to reach out to me either by email or visiting me in my office hours and ask for help because, um, because it shouldn't take longer than too much longer than that indicated timer. A lot of times when students are actually working in the practice or the application piece, they're not going to be doing it in the Google slide deck. They'll actually be doing it elsewhere on the web. This is an example of a choice board. So for each block, I have a link to a different site. And in this particular lesson, asking students to explore one of these websites. And simply by clicking that link, it will take them into wherever they'll be completing their activity. A lot of potential in linking, right? You can link them to a worksheet or a video or a game that you want them to play. From there, if whatever the students were working on um, is shareable and there's a link for them to share back to me, sometimes that's a voice recording, sometimes that's a digital drawing, I'll ask them to paste the link right into the Google slide deck. Sometimes I like to just insert a movement GIF, uh, like you saw me use in our synchronous lessons to remind students to stop and to stretch and to move because they've probably been sitting down for a little bit. Sometimes I'm asking them to come back to the Google slide deck to do some reflection. If it's complicated, I'll show them an example of what mine would look like. So in this case, I showed them an example of an image I chose and uh, some responses I made. And then I'll give them your own template. So this is a totally blank template where students would type the product name that they explored. They would insert an image of it, write a short summary and indicate some key features. So they do this entirely on the Google slide deck itself. Again, if you remember some of the key features of your learning management system, if you assign this to make a copy for each student, each student will be typing on their own Google slide deck so I can go in and look and grade that. Sometimes I'm asking students to share what they created or what they thought about the lesson. This example, I'm asking students to go to Padlet and paste one word that they thought represents the function of the product they explored. Then comment on at least three classmates guessing which product they uh, looked at based on the word that they posted. So giving students really explicit directions in how I want them to share and how I want them to communicate. And we'll uh, look at that a little bit later on. And then finally, at the end of every asynchronous lesson, I have a you're done slide, just a small celebration um, and a reminder to them to turn it in or mark it as done on Google Classroom. So this is an example of what my Google slide asynchronous learning looks like. It is in your toolbox. And if you want to work directly off of this, all you'll have to do is make a copy of the entire presentation. And once you have your own copy, you can start changing the titles, you can delete slides, add slides, however you want to edit it. I also wanted to show you an example of an actual asynchronous lesson that my students did last week. So this is my vocabulary template. I use this same sort of space theme every single time I'm asking my students to work on vocabulary, just to kind of give that reminder in their head of, oh, this is, this is a vocabulary lesson. I remember what we do when we do vocabulary. Here's that learning target. It's based directly on the Colorado State Standards, an overview of what they'll do in this lesson, and it needs to be spell checked. <laughs> And then here's that direct instruction. So I've recorded a short video explaining exactly what I'd like them to do in the lesson. Hello, my friends, we are starting a new. So it looks like this. Then I've linked them to Quizlet. They're completing their um, vocabulary in Quizlet. As you can see, when they click that icon, it will take them into the Quizlet classroom where they can create their new deck. 
Then I've given them their vocabulary words. This is li linked to um, a dictionary for them to look up the definitions. I've asked them to take a screenshot from their practice game and insert it into the slide as evidence. And then they had a couple of other tasks like looking at synonyms and using words into a sentence. And then as always, there's that you're done slide at the end reminding them to turn in this assignment. When I do this on Google Classroom, again, I'll be able to see each of their individual sentences because I've made a copy for each student.